Hey, hey, welcome back to the Notcast, or if this is your first time watching, welcome. Uh, about twice a week I talk about things that interest me and sometimes not very many other people. Uh, today I am talking about the uh, the latest release by the Swades and the uh, deluxe expanded edition of the Auto Fiction album, the packaging of which uh, has scooped up many sad record collector tears over the past few days. So I'm, I was going to say I'm going to do an unboxing, but you can't really do an unboxing for one of these. And in true Blue Peter fashion, here's one I made earlier. Uh, I'm also going to talk a little bit about Suede, and I'm going to talk about the Auto Fiction album, albeit briefly. Um, here I saw Suede three times uh, last week at the Electric in Brixton. They were on phenomenal form. They are one of the best live bands I've seen. That's why I see them so many times. Uh, and uh, so, right, without any further ado, let's get into this. So Auto Fiction, the band's, I think it's their ninth album. Yep, ninth album, released in 2022, gets a deluxe expanded three CD edition uh, that came out last week. And there have been lots of commentary about the packaging for this. So I'm going to show you how to open it and get away with it without completely fucking it up. Very technical term there. So, first and foremost, uh, this, as a piece of design and concept art, follows the themes and ideas that were also on the original box set version of the album. And I know sometimes you might think, oh, if you have to explain the art, the art hasn't worked. Well, not strictly true. It's more of an instinctual piece as opposed to something that necessarily you read it in books, as Echo and the Bunnymen said. So, first and foremost, I think autofiction is designed as a tangible, physical product that you have to interact with to experience. I'm going to say a terrible thing about record collectors now. I know I'm on thin ground because I am one, but there are two types of record collectors. There are people that want the pristine object, completely untouched. They get annoyed by the fact that, oh, I don't know, the hype sticker covers some of the artwork, that the hype sticker's colour doesn't necessarily match the colour of the rest of the artwork, and that the hype sticker is on the shrink wrap, which means they have to take the hype sticker off, store it somewhere, open the shrink wrap, and then put it onto the package itself. I'm kind of one of those guys, but at the same point, I'm not. Records are meant to be loved. They're meant to be experienced. They're meant to be opened. And during COVID, and I thought, I, I was looking at some of my records during COVID, and I was like, I've never played these. Why have I got these shrink-wrapped albums? Why am I saving them for a sunny day? There are a lot of sunny days and a lot of rainy days during COVID. I thought, if I, never, if I don't open these now in the middle of a once-in-a-lifetime, once-in-a-century pandemic, I'm never going to bloody open them. So I opened them. I broke the seal. Like Raiders of the Lost Ark, a little indie, uh, Indiana Jones, opening an indie rock album out of its seal and, and like perforating the sacred space. Uh, this is what you're meant to do with autofiction. You're meant to open it, touch it, feel it, experience it. And that ties in with the themes of the record. The themes of the record being uh, very geared towards interactivity. Uh, into um, things like, you know, uh, physical intimacy, things where you have to basically, I suppose getting your hands dirty is not the right word to describe it, but elements where you, you have to intersect with the world around you and you have to touch the objects to make them work because otherwise it's it's just like a, like a rocket that you, and you, pr you never press the button. It just stands there, it's just a big hunk of steel that never does what it's meant to do. So, pardon me. So with auto fiction, uh, let's get a little bit closer here. Uh, when you look at the cover, you can see there there's a perforation that's on the cardboard three CD set. This is the thing that's driving everybody, including a lot of middle-aged men, at Super Deluxe Edition, absolutely fucking bonkers. Um, sorry to swear, but it is. Uh, it's uh, getting steam coming out of their ears. My brother, normally a very placid man who never, ever argues with people on Twitter, says, and it is, quote, I quote, fucking atrociously designed, not necessarily true. It's a different kind of design to what you're experiencing. Most people, when they buy a CD or a record, they think you take the shrink wrap off, the cover is a print of the cover. You open it, there it is. You've got a booklet that's inside there that you can kind of either, you know, open, read, etc., intersect with, feel, touch, uh, and that's it. And the only part of it that you have to break is the seal. Everything else is perfect. The expanded version of Autofiction takes its cue from starting off from Pink Floyd's Wish You Were Here in 1975, which came in a black plastic 
bag that you had to open, um, followed through with UF orbs, uh, well, UF orb by, uh, by the orb, um, which was uh, shrink wrapped inside a, a kind of a, a blue plastic seal. So in order to experience the music, you had to cut the seal in order to get into it. Um, and then also the Mondo L um, edition of the Fight Club LP, where you have to destroy the package in order to experience the music that, that is within it. Packaging is a wonderful thing. And I'm going to explain why this packaging is well thought through, albeit somewhat infuriating. By the way, in a couple of, I should have pointed out at the beginning, I will tell you how to open this without completely ruining it. Actually, I should have done that right from the start, but I didn't. Sorry, I don't rehearse these. I just kind of open my mouth and start talking. So first and foremost, um, the, the theme that we have inside the album is very simple. It's, you're meant to just tear the shrink wrap off and then you've got the album and you kind of open it up and then you kind of experience it. I, for my sins, have a slightly different approach. So if you want to be very, very careful and you take this section here, um, which uh, is, is glued in, um, you can then... What you do, take a scalpel and you cut it and slowly move it across here. You can also use, by the way, a serrated kitchen knife if you don't have a scalpel available. Um, I don't recommend using a standard pair of scissors. I recommend using a, the, your sharpest cutting knife that you've got available. And you only need to bring it in about a centimetre or so in order to make it work. Um, as you can see, the glue that is used to keep this together um, does actually have a blank portion on the print there, so you're able to do it. Um, if it helps, uh, you might need to use some of this stuff, sticky stuff remover. This is super useful, but I suspect it won't actually do a huge amount of good because it's inside the packaging here. Um, if you, you, you can use this for getting like really sticky price tags off. Very, very helpful. Uh, ever since I discovered that thing existed, I use it on a very frequent basis. So take a, a scalpel or a sharp serrated knife and slowly move it across the bottom of the auto fiction cover and then that opens it up without tearing the top open like a tin of beans or uh, perhaps uh, you know some fruit um, because it whilst it, obviously this is a mass-produced work of art it is also a mass-produced product product it is a music delivery system it's meant to be touched felt interacted with and used it's not meant to sit there on the shelf in a pristine fashion never to be thought about as an object of ownership Music is meant to be loved and adored. It really, really is. And of course, you've probably worked out, I love and adore quite a lot of music. The second thing that we have, let's go a bit deeper into it, is that you open it up and you kind of go, well, that's, that's very nice. Um, I mean, admittedly, now, your first thought when you open it is you kind of go, oh, I could slide it out, couldn't I? No, you can't. You can't slide it out because in order to have to show you why you can't slide it out, I have to open it up. Those aren't actually slidable parts. These are folds and little flaps here, little wings, in fact, uh, that contain performance information and other details that are on there. So, for example, this is for the studio album, writing, recordings, credits, studios, that type of thing. And this is for the bonus tracks and for the live disc. Uh, so there are three CDs on this. Let's open it up and see how we go. Um, it depends if you're the guy from Super Deluxe Edition that lets them all fall out or if you think about them being packaged perhaps more carefully. It opens in a triptych like this, which is in fact so big, I can't even show it to you unless I step back a bit. There you go. How's that for you? How's that grab you? Auto fiction uh, and contains effectively, it folds out as a huge bit of work, which I mean, if you wanted to open it carefully, you could probably put that on your wall, but I, would, I wouldn't recommend doing that. Um, and it does mess with the record collector in me because on one respect, the art looks better. It's, it's designed to be, to be viewed vertically, but then the text is designed to be viewed horizontally. Oh my God, that's going to mess with you, isn't it? It messes with me, but you know what? I have to live with it, let go of it. So let's get a little further into it because I've kind of given you the big picture without giving you the, the little picture that we've got for the set. Um, and it has to be folded open a very particular way. So, there we go, unboxing. Open that up, there's a picture of the Brett. Um, that's a photograph of, uh, again, the band on stage with Neil and Matt. There's your flaps with your information. You open these out. Uh, you then get another picture of, of Brett and Matt. Uh, you get Auto Fiction CD number one. CZ number two, which has the bonus tracks. So it has, I think, six bonus tracks on. The six bonus tracks 
Uh, she, uh, the three songs from the She Still Leads Me On, 12 Inch, uh, which are The Sadness in You, The Sadness in Me, Days Like Dead Moths, and The Prey. They're fantastic, by the way. Um, there's a track called You Don't Know Me, which is on the Japanese edition of the standard autofiction release. Uh, there is There Is No Me If There Is No You, which I don't really know where that one came from, possibly a streaming option. And then track six is Still Waiting, uh, which is a, a lovely song that was only on the download version of the album. So we have six extra studio tracks on CD2. And then CD3 is the autofiction album played in full live on the March tour, uh, and that includes performances from Leeds, Bath, Bexhill, which I went to, uh, and a number of other shows. Let's open up this a little bit more. Now, there's been some criticism about these CDs and how they're packaged. You turn it round, okay? These CDs slot into little holders, like they're little slits, and if they fall out when you open them, it's because they've probably become dislodged in shipping to you. It's not badly designed. It's, it's uh, just, you need to just show a little bit of care and attention to things once you've opened it up. So then you take uh, the auto fiction CD out there, you just fold it out like that. Uh, there's a photograph of uh, Richard, uh, one of Britain's best guitarists, in fact, one of the world's best guitarists and very underrated. Um, uh, you have some, some live shots there. This, I think, is from the Camden Electric Ballroom uh, in October 22. Um, if, the, if it folded out there, you could see me about here, uh, but there you are. And then you take out the auto fiction, the, uh, s the live CD of the album played live. And then you have the very last panel there, which features a photograph of the debut performance of the songs from auto fiction, uh, when the band played under the alias Crushed Kid at the, um, at the Moth Club in that there London, uh, which was a fabulous gig by the way. So that is your Auto Fiction 3 CD Deluxe Edition. And once you get your head around the fact that in order to experience the album, you have to open the packaging in a way that perhaps is counterintuitive um, and you have to, to, have to uh, cut the slit at the bottom of the package, you get something that's generally actually pretty good after that. Uh, it's affordable. It's three CDs of music. Yes, technically you could probably put it inside two in a jewel pack, but that's not really... Um, quite in fitting with it um, one comment that is about the extra bonus tracks is yes there is an alternate mix of shadow self that was streamed there is um, a couple of cover versions that the band recorded for the bbc so a cover of, of fall by nadine shah and a cover of because the night uh, written by the bruce springsteen that said um, they're both they're both covers uh, covers haven't had a place on any suede studio release uh, in terms of an album in a contemporary fashion thus far that is your auto fiction deluxe expanded version uh, and i think what i will say about the packaging is actually very well thought out you may not necessarily agree with the thinking behind it but it is well thought out it's got it stays true to the concept and the themes that are inside the album it reflects i think the the huge emphasis on packaging that has taken place over the past few years. So if you order anything online, it comes in a cardboard box that looks like this. An Amazon box, for example, has a rip-off tear that sits on there, but because it's an Amazon box and it's not part of the package itself, nobody cares about that. Um, there's a, an interview with the, with the design studio that said a lot of consumption is through throwaway boxes. Uh, one part utility, one part recycling, the packaging for the album is designed to approach the idea around the duality of disposability. Is it something is only useful, or more correctly, the wrapping and the packaging is only useful until such point as the time that you need to consume it. And to actually kind of draw attention to the fact that the thing that really matters about this isn't the packaging, it's the music that's on the packaging. That's the thing that you're meant to be buying. So you shouldn't necessarily be too to kind of beholden to the, oh, I can't, I can't tear the thing. The other thing about this is this kind of looks like stitches or a scar, and um, everyone's got scars, everyone's had stitches, everyone's fallen over a football when they were a kid. Um, life is imperfect by its very nature. An autofiction, the cross between autobiography and fiction is the place where this album exists. It's part autobiography, it's part fiction, Part of it is about the tangible physical experience of living in the real world and part of it is about the world that only exists in your head. Um, it's 
inspired by Warhol, it's inspired by uh, Richard Hamilton, it's inspired by the fetishization of packaging that has been going on for a long period of time. If you remember Warhol's baked bean tins, for example, and it reflects the kind of concept of brutality that sits inside the subject matter of this, because all the songs are about relationships and intimacy. Uh, the other thing that, that I will talk about, and, and this is perhaps a little bit of a leap, but it's not unintentional, is that it's designed to create almost like an equivalent of, uh, if you think about the religious triptych, so that's the three kind of panels that you have that are in a lot of religious imagery. Uh, if you go to Antwerp's um, cathedral or church, with one of the tallest churches in the world at 404 feet, it's got a super impressive triptych, and this is designed to actually kind of invoke the feeling of a triptych that's opening that gives you a concept of something that's widescreen, that's epic in taste and in, in identity, and something that isn't just, you know, a picture of a, a photograph of, of the cover of the record. It's something that's far more, um, what's the word, of the tangible, touchable, feelable. It's an object to be consumed, used, and listened to. And uh, whilst I understand the annoyance that comes around it from a packaging point of view, it challenges the concepts that we have around what, what packaging for a record is, what it should be, and how we should consume our music. Ultimately, we consume our music with our ears. A, a record, uh, or whatever it is, is just a music delivery system at the end of the day, whether it comes on vinyl, CD, download. The thing that matters is that it gets in your ears and it speaks to your soul. And that's more important than anything else. So, if you really, really feel like you don't want to screw up the packaging for this, get a knife, run it through the bottom slowly, uh, and hopefully you won't damage it too much. If you don't care, just rip it. It's fine. It's your CD. Do what you like with it. It's up to you because of the experience that we have with music. Each one of us is individual and unique to us. There are songs in here that have unique and specific meanings to me that only mean that to me and possibly one other person in the world. Others, other listeners may have very similar kind of emotions to, and responses to some of these songs, but again, the meanings and the memories that are attached to those are completely unique and individual. Music is individual. Beauty is in the ear of the beholder. And uh, I hope that you enjoy and love this album. And that if you want to open it without screwing it up, that you have access to sharp implements and not just your wit. Right, that's a short and sweet one. Thank you very much. Uh, catch up with you some other time. If you hate it and if you hate the packaging to this, please complain to the band, not to me. I didn't design it. Uh, if I did, then, um, well, I might have done things differently. But I didn't, so I didn't. So there we are. Okay. Uh, oh, also, whilst I remember, I saw them in Brixton. They are phenomenal live. If you get a chance to see Suede live, go. They are one of the best live bands in the world at the moment. And that's why I keep going back to them, like my own personal little drug, which is probably safer, cheaper and better for my waistline than anything else. OK, uh, take care of yourselves and each other. Stay beautiful, beautiful ones. See you later. Bye.